Hello everyone, my name is Doug Polk and I'd like to welcome you to a new YouTube segment we're going to be doing called Poker Hands. We're going to be taking famous poker hands played either at high stakes or just well-known hands and analyze the play of both players. This is actually going to be a strategy-based segment so you can learn what they should have done as well as some insight into how to play poker at a high level. This week we're going to be covering the, the infamous hand of Miss Finland, Sarah Chapik, against PLO player Ronnie Barda. Without further ado, let's roll the clip. Hold. I'm going to call. Okay, yes. Great idea, Sarah. Love it, love you. I mean, I love it. She's a lip with ace deuce. Me and Mrs. Finland right now, Ooh. heads up. I believe it's Ms. Miss, I'm sorry, Miss <laughs> Finland. All right, let's, let's see a flop. She limps in, I believe, the hijack with ace two off. Maybe it's the cutoff. It doesn't really matter. As we know, we should not be limping into pots. We should be raising. Also, out of the cutoff for the hijack, ace two off is far too weak of a hand to choose to play. So you could say she opened this up with a pretty bad play out of the gate. There's a four on the flop. Ronnie has bottom pair. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Ronnie, if you bust her on the first hand, he bets. 30,000. And Sarah raises with a straight draw. Do you have something? Yes, I do. I believe you. <laughs> I believe you. 30,000? Yeah. On the flop, she actually just makes a pretty reasonable decision and decides to raise the flop lead. Now, why is that reasonable to raise with ace-2 on queen-5-4? Well, you put hands like, let's just say, a 4 or a 5 into a tough spot, because now they might be up against a bigger hand. You have outs to improve, making a straight on a 3 or a top pair on an ace. And if you decided to lead the flop as a bluff with a hand like, let's just say, 8-6 or 8-7, you make him fold out his equity in the pot and put him in a difficult spot. Now, the size she chooses to raise to, 30,000, it doesn't really make much sense. Uh, now, because of how cheap it is, if he does have a hand, like let's say 8-6 or 8-7, he's going to have to call because his odds are simply too good to fold his hand. So, I, I would, while I think it's okay to raise the flop, I would pick a size more like 45 or 50,000. And additionally, calling the flop is totally reasonable. If he is bluffing, you're ahead, and you can play on later streets. So, I think call or raise both totally reasonable options from Miss Finland on the flop. So Ronnie has called the race and improves to trips on the turn. Oh boy. Why are you checking? <laughs> you raised me on the flop. Um. Uh, num num. She bets just over half the pot. Ronnie, do not bust her before the swimsuit portion. Ronnie's clock is running. Remember, every player has 30 seconds per decision. If he thinks she's bluffing, he'll call. If not, he could raise. The shot oh, yeah, clock. I forgot Did that. Raise. <laughs> raise, 155. 155. She really should not be calling this. 255. She re-raises. What? Just, just okay. I'm not used to those, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, huh? 255,000. Yes. Ronnie calls. Once he calls the turn and checks, she makes a comment. Why are you checking? <laughs> you raised me on the flop. If I'm Ronnie and she says that to me, and you know, we're, we're looking at it from Miss Finland's point of view, of course, but if, just put ourselves in Ronnie's shoes for a second. What does that comment mean? Because Ronnie should be checking every hand he can have here. She's raised the flop. She's saying she has a good hand, so his check means nothing. And the fact that she makes a comment about his check signifies to me that she does not know much about poker and I would treat three of a kind accordingly. Here she decides to carry on with her bluff and bet 55,000. 55,000 is a little bit too small in my opinion. I think I probably would like a size more like 70 or 80,000. But I don't mind what she's trying to do. It's very unlikely Ronnie has a hand like a four. Fours are generally going to check the flop. Uh, and now, of course, because there's two fours out there, a four is even less likely. So I don't mind continuing to fire on the turn. 
However, when Ronnie check raises, it's time to abandon ship. Ronnie has signified multiple at multiple points in this hand with his flop lead and then call, and raised here on the turn that he does in fact have a strong hand. So there's no reason that we can't just believe him. If he's let's just say for a moment he's bluffing, well then we will have hands like five five or five four or queen queen or all these other strong holdings. Now we might not be limping some of those hands, which makes it a bit more confusing. But the point is this. We can easily have stronger hands than ace-2, and now is the time to let it go. What I would do in Miss Finland's position here is actually not have any hands raised, and I would either call or fold. Because really, Ronnie's saying now he has three of a kind or better. What does re-raising do? If Ronnie's bluffing, he's going to fold. If he has a good hand, he's going to continue. So I don't really think that this re-raise on the turn makes much sense. I would elect to either call or fold, and definitely fold with ace-2. When she re-raises over the top of his check raise, the hand is getting kind of absurd. This is a lot of bets and raises to have gone into a limp pot, and I think she's way overplaying the fact she just has a straight draw and ace high. It's my belief that maybe she doesn't actually know hand rankings, and might not even totally be sure if she's bluffing or value betting at this point. I don't know. I could be wrong. It's just my opinion. But the confidence displayed with how weak her hand is definitely shows she's not familiar with poker in general. The board bricks out for Sarah. She has just ace high. Honey, she's a little better looking than you. We're kind of rooting for her. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Check. She's bluffed every street so far. All in. And she shoves! She slides out the bluff card. <laughs> oh, oh my god! How is this happening? I thought it would be. I wanted to stay and play with you, Miss Finland. I understand. I know I am. <laughs> On the river, she makes probably the best decision of the entire hand, and she puts Ronnie to the test jamming it in when he checks to her on the river. The size here is fine, and I like the play if you're going to get to this point with some bluffs. A, lot, a big mistake a lot of players have when they start poker or they're learning poker is they're afraid to fire that last barrel, and sometimes you can get people off of big hands by letting, the river, just let, letting that river barrel fly and trying to get the fold. So I like her playing the river. But other than that, I think she has a lot to learn, and definitely not a very well-played hand from her perspective, but at least she has the gusto, you know. Now let's talk about the hand from Ronnie's perspective. Pre-flop, he checks in the big one with 8-4, which is totally standard. On the flop, he leads, which is actually very peculiar. What is he trying to do with bottom pair here? Is he trying to get action? Is he trying to get a fold? I'm not really sure. Generally speaking, when you have a weak pair in No Limit, you want to be checking, because if they have hands like ace high, you want a small pot. And if they have hands like air, you want them to try and bluff that you can catch with your pair. So his flop lead is definitely a mistake. When raised, he now has to call, and this is exactly why you don't bet hands like a four on the flop. What do you do against a raise? Well, it's not very clear. What if you're crushed? She could have a hand like a set, or two pair, or even an over pair, or a queen. You know, depending on what she's limping. So now, because he led and gets raised, he's put himself in an awkward situation which could have been avoided by checking the flop. On the turn, he checks and faces a bet. Here he decides to check raise, and I could see, being, I could see there being some merit to raising or calling. One of the things that I like about calling is that if I have a hand like a queen, I protect myself by having some very strong hands. Also, if I check raise and she decides to re-raise me, I'm in a tough spot, so I can see merit to just calling. However, check raising is also fine. She could have a hand like a queen, or, you know, queen five, or maybe even just a five, or frankly, given the way she's playing the hand, Lord knows what she could have. When you do check raise, and she then min re-raises, and is unfamiliar with how to put the chips into the pot, I feel like it's time to look at the situation. You're playing someone that limped in pre, was confused by a check, putting an action in a weird spot, and is min three betting you on the turn. At this point, I think it's time to just say, okay, I have three of a kind, and I'm playing a recreational player, and call her down. I don't know if I can fold this hand. I don't know how you play. I've never played with you before. <laughs> what is going on here? If I fold this hand, and, and they see this fold, and you have, like, king-queen or something, 
It's gonna be the most embarrassing thing ever for me. You understand this, right? Okay. I don't. I don't have any time to think over this hand. I'm like nervous. I don't know what's going on. It's nice over there. 300, 500. Oh my God, another 600. Five seconds. And Ronnie's folded. Holy shnikes. Calling the turn and folding the river is a disastrous play. He's putting her on essentially one hand, pocket five. He even makes a comment about fives. Do you have fives full or something? He loses to five five, maybe five four suited, and then maybe a hand like queens. But other than that, she basically can't have hands that beat him. Maybe, maybe she raises a four in the flop, hard to say. But the point is this. When very few hands beat you, and you're playing someone that's clearly new to poker, you need to just call down, or else you should be playing in a passive way to just make sure that you get the see showdown until you know the way she's going to play. So in summary, this was too aggressive for Miss Finland, and Ronnie should have realized based on some clues that she was a recreational player and called her down with his three of a kind. But luckily, she bombed the river and got one through, and this is really a great poker hand. Is this real life? <laughs> that just, no, that just happened to me? Thank you for joining me for this week on Poker Hands, and I'll see you guys next week. What's that? Subscribe to the channel? Add me on Snapchat at WCG Writer? Sure, that sounds great.